To record in 1080p full HD in OBS Studio, your first stop is going to be the Settings tab in the bottom right hand corner. Click the Settings tab and your first stop here is the Video tab on the left hand side. When we go into the Video tab, that's where we will select your resolution as well as your frame rate for your project. Once you get here, there are two resolution fields, don't worry, they're quite simple. The top one is what your canvas is going to be. That's that area down here where you see me on my other camera. You're going to set that to be 1920 by 1080. The reason why I recommend this is because you want your canvas to be the same resolution as what you're recording in. In more cases than not, it helps you understand what the final recorded product will look like. You don't have to wonder how it's going to scale up or down. For the next resolution field, output scaled resolution, that's the resolution of your actual recording itself. So you want to bump that up to 1920 by 1080 in this case. So now your canvas is 1080p and your recording is now 1080p based on these settings. Depending on how powerful your computer is, you want to select the highest downscale filter possible. If you're having CPU usage issues, you can bump that down to 16 samples, but I recommend bumping it up to 36 samples if your computer can handle it. There are two common frame rates to use when doing 1080p recordings. 30 FPS for demos like this one you're watching right now or presentations or on-camera stuff. And then 60 FPS would be the other setting you may want to consider if you're doing high motion trailers or gameplay or any videos that have lots and lots of motion going on, 60 FPS would be best for that. I'm going to do 30 here. I'm going to tell you the best bit rate for both in just a moment. Now, once you're done with these settings, you're set up for 1080p recording, hit apply, but do not yet hit OK. Your next stop is going to be the audio tab. There are a number of settings here I recommend changing and double checking before you get started in any project. First is your sample rate. Check your audio device that you'll be recording in and see what its preferred sample rate is. Mine is 48 kilohertz, yours might be 44.1 kilohertz. Generally, it doesn't make much of a difference which one you select with USB devices. Double check your USB device and see what the preferred manufacturer sample rate is. Next, go ahead and disable every single audio device on your computer right here through these menus. You will want to manually add whichever audio device you want to record with so that you don't get confused and you don't have extra stuff popping up in your recording that you were not aware of. Disable everything and then manually add your microphone or your capture audio device. I have an entire tutorial in the playlist below on how to do that. Then hit apply, but do not yet hit OK. The next tab is the biggest and most important tab when it comes to recording in 1080p, that is the output tab. Let's click that and set up your settings. This will be default on simple, it'll look like this. You do not want to use simple, you want to use advanced, because advanced will unlock your advanced recording and audio settings. Drop this menu down and go to advanced. Skip the streaming tab, which is where it'll drop you initially today. I'm doing separate videos on streaming. Go to straight to recording tab, since this is a video specifically about recording. Here, you will want to select your recording path for your content. Create a folder. This is my recommendation. Create a specific folder somewhere on your computer. I created one on my storage drive called whatever you want to call your recordings folder and select that folder so you actually know where your recordings are going to go. For your recording format, I very highly recommend selecting MP4. Why? MP4 is the most compatible video format across all video editing software and apps. There's no reason not to use MP4. Your editor will thank you later and you will thank yourself later for using that format. Only check audio track one for most applications. Okay, here is a big decision. Depending on your computer hardware, you are going to decide whether you're going to use the NVIDIA NVENC encoder if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you do have an NVIDIA graphics card and you have any encoder on there that says NVIDIA or NVENC, I recommend selecting the newest version of that here and putting your, your encoding load, your essentially your recording load, 
on your graphics card because your graphics card is designed to push video. If you do not have a de dedicated graphics card, that's okay. There's a great encoder built into OBS called X264. When you select the X264 encoder, it means that your processor, your Intel or AMD processor, will be processing all of the recording, putting a much greater load on your entire computer as a result. All right, once you've select your, selected your encoder, and I'm going to do my settings as X264, you need to choose what bit rate, what rate control essentially you want to use here. Some people tell you variable bit rate, VBR, is better. I recommend CBR, constant bit rate. And why do I recommend that? It means that the quality of your video all the way through your video will be constant, not fluctuating up and down and variable. Do CBR. It is the best default setting for recordings. Okay, if you have a 30 frames per second project, like I currently have, your minimum bit rate for your recording is 8,000 kbps. 30 frames per second, 8,000 kbps. If you are doing a 60 frames per second project, I recommend your minimum recording bit rate at 12,000 kbps. This is based on the YouTube recommended minimums for uploads. If you want to go up higher than that, go ahead. It's up to you with your storage, your computer, your editing. It's up to you how high you want to go, but those are your minimums. 8,000 for 30 frames per second, 12,000 for 60 frames per second. I recommend leaving your keyframe interval, your CPU usage, and all of those other settings default. There's no reason to change them for most of you that are watching this video. Hit apply, but do not yet hit OK. Your next stop is going to be the audio tab right up here. Almost everybody misses the audio tab, and it makes me cry. Let's fix that. So you're only recording track number one, as we saw earlier in this tutorial, and your audio bit rate here will default to 160 in OBS. That is not that good. That is like a low to mid quality MP3 quality audio. Bump this up from 160 to 320. That will double your audio bit rate and turn your recording from a low to mid tier MP3 level recording to a high quality level mp3 recording this will drastically improve the quality of your content doing this you can hit apply now then you have my permission to hit okay now now that you changed your resolution if you had any content there as you can see me on my webcam here on the screen it got kind of jacked up the resolution changed and now my source isn't fitting the screen. So a quick way to fix that, if you're trying to do a simple recording, is right clicking on the thing that is not the right size anymore, going down to transform and hitting fit to screen. It'll pop you into the size of the screen that you are currently using this, the resolution of your current canvas. If you want to start your recording, there's a button right over here on the bottom right hand corner that says start recording. Go ahead and click that and do a test. Now you're gonna see a couple fields here that confirm your recording is going, the little red dot of course, and then you wanna keep a very close eye on your CPU usage down here in the bottom. I'm currently at 17%-ish on this computer. If your CPU usage is going 40, 50, 60, 70 plus percent, you may wanna bump down your settings in terms of your bit rate or your resolution, or you may wanna consider upgrading your computer to get a dedicated graphics card like an nvidia graphics card so that you can use something other than your processor to handle your recording load if any of this is confusing or you'd love to have extra help with your home studio setup your technology i have literally been doing this for a living for the last 10 years and i've helped hundreds of people become more successful through online broadcasting link in the description below to awalldigital.com you can scroll down Go to my schedule, pick your day, pick your time, enter your information and book me, and boom, I'm on a one-on-one -on -one video call helping you become more successful with your online content creation needs.